friends, how are we doing? Today, we're bringing back a format that I did a couple times last year for five stars and one stars, and we're doing a murder mystery tournament to find out my favorite murder mystery book. <laughs> oh my God, classic, classic. Yeah, round of applause. I'm really, 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 really excited for this. So I've pulled together 16 of my favorite murder mystery books. We're putting them against the test, against each other in a murder mystery bracket tournament. And we're gonna see what comes out on top. I think I know what's gonna come out on top at the moment with my current biases, <laughs> but I thought this would be fun to do. Now, also don't, like there could be two books here that are pitted against each other, like my second and third favorite. So like we're not, don't take what makes the top four as like viable, these are my top four murder mysteries, but that's part of the fun of it. Part of the fun of it is when you come across a pairing that like, you know, really, you know, are a hard pairing to decide. So yeah, we're gonna be pitting these against each other. Let me know what your predictions are <laughs> for what's gonna make the top. And shall we just get going? Shall we begin? Okay, our first pairing is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James versus Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. <sighs> so this is difficult. The Broken Girls, I loved. It's kind of two murder mysteries. There's one murder mystery in the present. Our main protagonist sister has died and she's trying to investigate what happened to her. But also a body is dug up on the ground of this old school and we're having a pastime and we're following characters from that school. So kind of the implication is one of them is the bodies. And this made me fall in love with Simone St. James's writing. Honestly, it is magical. It is magical the way that she writes. There's always this little speculative element. I thought this was paced perfectly. I thought this was like the perfect little book. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I could recommend this to a lot of people and they would enjoy it. Wrong Place, Wrong Time is one of the most unique books I've read. We're following a woman who witnesses her son kill someone. She goes to sleep, she wakes up, it's the previous day. She goes to sleep, she wakes up, it's the day before that. So she's going back in time and she kind of figures out that she needs to uncover the truth of why her son ended up killing someone in order to stop it happening in the present. Um, here's the thing. <sighs> I think if you asked me this question based on my like initial enjoyment after I read the books, my answer would be different. I think after initial enjoyment after I read the books, it would be The Broken Girls. However, I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time when I was doing my first ever vlog where I read the nominees for Goodreads Choice Awards in the mystery thriller category. And I felt like it was a little bit hampered by me having to read so many books in a short space of time and like kind of getting a bit burnt out of mystery thrillers. But in terms of what has really grown in my mind over time and like I've appreciated more and more and realized more amazing things about I think it's gonna be wrong place wrong time that moves forward oh it's getting exciting already okay <laughs> then we've got your guide to not getting murdered on a quaint English by Maureen Johnson which is like half a murder mystery I think we can allow it you know it's like taking the piss out of the murder mystery genre and we've got the last devil to die by Richard Osman <sighs> this was the no-brainer this was the banker this was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. So The Last of Desire is the fourth and the Thursday Murder Club series where, I mean, we're gonna see quite a few of these throughout the list, but we're following an elderly cast of characters at a retirement village as murders start appearing on their doorstep that they have to solve. And The Last of Desire was the most recent one. And dear God, <laughs> if you've read it, I keep getting reactions from people who have read it and like talking about the, the scenes that we all have to read and we all cry and like, I can't explain to you. Let me let, let me say some of my thoughts because we're going to be talking about this more. But I I just love it. I think the Last of Us Die is an impeccable book, and I just want everyone to read this series and read the. Oh. Okay, I'll talk about it more. Then I put the Man Who Died Twice and the Bill at the Mist as one entry because I'm not going to lie to you. I can't really distinguish them. I read them like a month apart. All the other Thursday Murder Clubs I've read like a year apart and those two I read a month apart and I, I need to do a reread to remember what's in what book. I can't distinguish them. I can like view them as an entity together but I can't really remember the difference between them. So I've put them as an entry and then we've got True Crime Story by Joseph Knox which is a mixed media about a girl who goes missing is presumed dead and it's all told through interviews of people who were in her life trying to uncover the truth of what happened to her. I mean, I just love the Thursday Murder Club. So like, that one, okay, the Thursday, okay. <laughs> I, this, I feel like this, this tournament is gonna go, it's gonna lead a certain way. There's a certain author is, is gonna be biased towards. 
I just accepted that I'm kind of a cheesy bitch that loves Richard Osman. That might, I don't know if that's gonna continue any further than that, but True Crime Story I enjoyed, but I remember it being a little bit of a tentative five star. Whereas I just love the Thursday Medical Cup, but I don't know if that's gonna make any further because to me, the first and the last ones are the strongest, spoiler alert. That, those two middle ones, I just can't <laughs> remember the difference between them. But Rich Men, I, I just love these books. They're just so good. Okay, The Three Dads by Katie Watson. We're following these three women who have played um, Dahlia Lively, who is like, an Akuparo equivalent basically throughout the years and it's set at a fan convention and they have to solve a murder and it's so good. It's like the golden age of crime. It really, uh, it like, it pays homage to the genre in such a fun way. It references like the character who is the author of Dali Lively is basically Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie is mentioned in the story as like, oh, she was different from Agatha Christie, but really it's like paying homage to Agatha Christie. And I just thought it was such a fun story for fans of murder mysteries to read. The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, it's a controversial one, because I loved it, but not everyone else does. <laughs> How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! I thought it was so good, but not everyone else loves it. So I, I only allow missing person mysteries into this, into my categorization of murder mysteries, when like it's a strong suggestion throughout the book that they've been murdered and that's why they're missing. Does that make sense? So there's like, there's a few I allow in. So we're following a girl who goes to Paris um, to go and stay with her brother. But when she gets there, she finds out that he's missing and she's kind of trying to hunt him down and she's getting to know the characters who live in his Paris apartment building. And like, they're a bit dodgy babes. They're a bit dodge, you know what I mean? They're a bit dodgy. <laughs> it's a controversial one because I feel like everyone else hated this, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the midway twist, it's one of those books that like, I love a midway twist that completely flips the book on its head, that completely changes what you think of the story, that completely puts you on a new path in the story. And I thought it was such a good one. I really don't see it coming. I love a book where a twist makes a memory. I can still remember like years later where I was sitting on the sofa in Tom's house when I read that twist and I was gagged, gooped and shocked and like delivered in the hands of God. Like absolutely, I had a heart attack and died because what a good twist. So I think I'm gonna put the Paris apartment forward. I, I would recommend the three Dahlias to more people. Absolutely, I would, for you watching, I would more recommend that you try and the three Dahlias than the Paris apartment. Cause I know not everyone has loved it, but <laughs> for me personally, I, I just love Lucy Foley and what she does and like the way she takes the piss out of rich people. I think she just has a really great finger on the pulse of that. Okay, then we've got our first Agatha Christie on the news next side. We've got the murder of Roger Ackroyd, which I don't, there's like a guy called Roger Ackroyd who's been murdered. <laughs> That's like all you need to know about it is set in like a quaint English village like a lot of Ag Agatha's are. What really makes this book is the twist. It's one of Agatha's best twists. Um, it's kind of renowned for being an incredible twist. So that's what makes the book. And then we've got The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, which is a historical mystery set on a ship. And we're kind of following a character who's kind of like the Watson to a character Sherlock. The Sherlock in the story is locked up on the boat as a prisoner. Um, and his Watson is kind of like waddling around the ship. Waddling? No, wandering. He's not waddling. <laughs> He's wandering around the ship and um, things start occurring. Devil symbols start appearing. Animals start getting killed. And then people maybe start getting killed. And they're like, is it the devil? Is it a person? What's going on? Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. I think... <sighs> The Devil in Dark Water is crazy. Here's the thing with Stuart Turton, his endings don't quite stick the landing. Or like his endings are often kind of so bonkers that you kind of just have to like, okay. <laughs> you have to suspend disbelief a little bit and that's the case in this one. It's complete opposites here because the rest of the book, the lead up to the ending makes this book and the ending is a little bit iffy. Whereas the rest of this book is a little bit, you know, not as, it's still good, but it's not as effective, but the ending makes it. They're complete opposites. I think for what it's done to the genre, I'm gonna have to put The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to make that decision. <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna have to go for. Okay, then our next pairing. We've got One by One by Ruth Ware, which let's just talk about it for a second. Miss Ruth Ware, Miss Ruth Ware wrote a classic isolated murder mystery for us once with one by one. She did it, right? She gave me what I wanted. And then all you guys didn't like it and scared her off. And now she's writing stupid ass domestic thrillers and I'm fucking pissed off. <laughs> I can see you're getting angry. Angry? No, I'm not angry, I'm livid. She turned into a modern Agatha Christie and you guys were like, oh, you know, it was Mark and he does a thriller. It wasn't what I was expecting. 
don't get do I care? Like support modern murder mysteries. I'm so, I I still have a lot of grudges about that. <laughs> So one by one is about this company who go on like a ski retreat to this resort and they start dying one by one. So it's set at a ski resort. It's it's so good. It, to me, it's one of Ruth Ware's best. And you guys, oh, we're just getting another fucking husband and wife domestic thriller this year. And then this I just put in as a place for all the Lady Hardcastle mysteries because I put in the Market for Murder because I think that is my favourite one, the second, but there's loads of five stars and otherwise loads of this board would have been Lady Hardcastle mysteries. So the Lady Hardcastle mysteries are Edwardian mysteries where we're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo as they retire to this quaint English village and they find out it's the murder hotspot of the world and it's them solving murder together. It's very much a cosy mystery series, my favourite cosy mystery series. Um, Mamma Mia. Here I go again, mama. It's gonna be Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. I love them. I love the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. It's just the fact that I'm so deep into the series. I love Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo so dearly. I love them so dearly. And it's just like one of my favorite series. I just realized something. These last four are the four that I put as my top four in my best murder mysteries video. And I've got to pit them against each other. This is diabolical. I feel well sick. Sing us I've a got song. a migraine. I've got a headache. Come on, lad. No, forget it. I'm sorry, Anna. You'll have to swap around. Apologies, not a good Fucking one. takes the piss. So many of these would have made it further had <laughs> had the pairings been different. Okay, interesting. Why did I do this to myself? Okay, we've got a good girl's guide to murder versus murder on the Orient Express. Murder on the Express, let's start with that, is one of Agatha Christie's most well known, and I think for good reason. It was the first murder mystery I ever read. Or I might have read the guest list before it, but one of the early murder mysteries I ever read. And Erky Poirot is on the Orient Express, and a guy is murdered on the train, and it's under very unusual circumstances. All the evidence is kind of contradictory, and um, he sits down with each of the characters on the train and kind of interviews them. It's kind of an interview format, which I love. And then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, many of you all know, is a mixed media murder mystery series where Pip is trying to solve the cold case of the disappearance slash possible probable, oh, my nail just broke. That's not fun. Um, probable murder of a girl from her school. I actually can't talk because I really don't know what I'm going to pick. What am I going to pick? Uh, 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 <laughs> I can't. I can't make this decision. Please, I can't make this decision. I haven't read either of these in such a long time that it's difficult. I love A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I love the mixed media. But I love the interview format of Murder on the York Express. And I love the twist in Murder on the York Express. Oh, uh, these could be like, these are up there. These four are so up there that this is painful. I don't know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I could flip a coin. I genuinely, I, do, I, I don't know what to pick. I keep flipping between the two. I keep flip flopping. What am I supposed to pick? <laughs> what am I supposed to pick? A good girl's guide to murder or murder on the Orient Express. Um... I don't want to express it was Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It's more the fact that like, if this was further deep in, I could deal with it, but it's like, consigning one of these to not making it past the first round is really painful to me. I think I'm leaning towards Murder on the Orient Express. That's painful. I don't know if I stand by that. <laughs> I don't know if I stand by that. That's really painful. If it was as good as dead, as Good As Dead isn't a murder mystery, but like, I think As Good As Dead might have won. And I know that's a controversial opinion because I, mean, I saw this TikTok the other day, or well, not TikTok, it was on YouTube Shorts, but it was obviously originally a TikTok. Bless this girl, I'm not calling her out, but she was like, yeah, read the first two in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and then don't read the last one. Don't read it. And I'm like, she's like, it's a different series. It's a different character. I'm like, you don't, you understand that that is the perfect arc to Pip's journey. And it is an incredible critique of true crime and a true crime genre and ah, it, I was angry I was angry it's a perfect book I, I love as good as dead I know it's an unpopular opinion I, lo I love both of these these are both top top tier you know this is painful this is painful painful and then we're gonna get into more painful because I know these were my top two when I did my favorite murder mysteries video we've got the guest list by Lucy Foley 
which again was a transformative book for me in getting into murder mysteries. It was one of the first murder mysteries I ever read and we're at this wedding on this island and we know at the, from the first chapter that someone's been killed that night and then we go back to kind of the day before the wedding and meet our characters and travel through time with them with occasional flashbacks to the night of the wedding. I think it is so good. The guest list is so good. And the Thursday Murder Club is of course the first in the Thursday Murder Club series, my favorite murder mystery series. And I think the first one is really strong. Ugh, fuck, this is horrible. <sighs> I can't do it. You can, can't. you can do it, you can, you can. I love the first one. The first one made me cry. I think it's a great introduction to the characters. I think the mystery is very strong. Ah! Here's my thinking, right? If I was to rank these today in terms of ranking, I think I would put the Thursday Men Club above the guest list. However, I feel like it's represented. <laughs> Its legacy is represented in the next round. So I am tempted to move the guest list forward because I think the, the Paris apartment is something different, right? This is a series, right? And I don't, do I need half of the next round to be Thursday Murder Club books? Probably not, probably not, you know? Even though I think this Thursday Murder Club is better than those. And like, if I was to rank it in terms of like third, fourth, whatever, I think the Thursday Murder Club would be ranked above the guest list, but I think I'm gonna move the guest list forward because of how transformative it was for me in terms of reading Murder Mysteries. And I, I do just love it. I, lo I love that book, but I love the Thursday Murder Club. No, I'm just gonna pretend this is in with these, like over <laughs> or something. Well, no, it's not, because I'm gonna probably make a decision. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna move the guest list forward. But I think I, as a book, I do prefer the Thursday Murder Club, but I feel like it's represented. That's, that's the way I'm getting out of that. Does that make sense? <laughs> No, you played the wrong decision! Okay, we're into our rounds now. I don't have to give you synopses. We know what we're dealing with. This is a very tough one because I think, again, if I was to make my best murder mysteries video today, these would both be up there. I love Wrong Place, Wrong Time. I love it. I'm so excited to read more from Ginny McAllister. I think it's a wonderful book. I think it's, it says, it's one of those murder mysteries that says so much about human nature and about our, our, our need to love the people that we love in the moment and living in the moment. I think it's wonderful, but like, it's, it's against the last devil to die. Like, what do, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? <laughs> it's last devil to die. I just want to talk about Last Devil to Die and Richard Osman and Thursday Murder Club series in general because this, I, I say this all the time, but I have never, I have never ever ever read books that distill human nature down to its core and essence like Richard Osman does. He is a genius. I could listen to his man talk forever. I'm obsessed with his podcast now that he's got a podcast. I think the way that he looks at the way that we as humans behave and what we love and what lights us up and what the little thing, the little nuances that we have, I think he is the best, the best at knowing that. I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I'm so glad that he's an author. I'm so glad that he's writing books. I'm so blessed. Like think of how many, like Richard's, he's, he's like, he's got a lot of years left in him. Think of how many Richard Osman books. I make it sound as if he's old. He's not, like he's not. But like, just think of how many Richard Osman books we could get in our lifetimes. He's publishing one a year. Like I could die having read like, I don't know, 40 Richard Osman books. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Isn't that incredible? I love it. Then we have got, the man who died twice in the bullet of Mr. versus the Paris apartment. See, because I, <laughs> as much as I love them, I can't remember much what happened between these two. I'm gonna move the Paris apartment forward. However, I just wanna let you know, if in this first round here, it was a good girl's guide to murder versus the Paris apartment, a good girl's guide to murder would be here. But it's in this, it's lost in the first round. Like that is absolutely crazy. Do you know what I mean? This isn't, this is difficult. This is difficult. But I think because of my memory, it would be, it would be dishonest of me to move this forward anymore. I kind of know what they were, but I just, I read them too close to one another. I read them in the month of each other. And it's too, it's too, yeah, they've blurred in my memory. That's why sometimes I don't like reading series close to one another because I, I do find it hard to differentiate what happened in each book, you know? Sometimes that's fine. Like I read Jade War and Jade Legacy from Fondalee back to back. And so those kind of like form one book in my mind. And that's kind of a good thing because it's so epic. But um, yeah, I just, 
<laughs> Sometimes it's not a good thing. Then we have got The Murder of Roger Ackroyd versus Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. Lady Hardcastle Mysteries are moving forward. These are one of my top recommendations for you guys if you're wanting a historical cozy mystery. I think they are written so well. And they're like, book 11 is about to come out. Like there's so many books to read. The audiobooks, I would always recommend you listen to the audiobooks. I get the physicals now because I love them so much. But like, I think for the first like three or four books, I just read them via audio and I loved them. I love this series. I love Lady Hardcastle and Her Made Float. The humor, the wit, the joy, the fun. They're so fun. They're so happy. They are so, even though it's about murders, <laughs> I just think they are the most fun read ever. I love them. I just do, because I feel better. If I feel better, I'm nicer. If I'm nicer, my life goes better. Because if I'm nicer, then you're gonna be nicer to me. And then we've got Murder on the Orient Express versus the guest list. Ah! I can't do it. My heart is saying no. They're so different. I love them for such different reasons that I find these very hard to compare. Like, because it's an older book, right? The Murder on the Express. There's certain moments of that. Like the opening of Murder on the Express is a little bit boring. You know what I mean? It's a little bit boring. But the guest list is so readable, but I think, in terms of twist, Murder on the Express is a better twist. Murder on the Express is one of the best twists in a murder mystery ever to exist, in my opinion. And I love the interview format. But the guest list is more readable. And I just love it. I love the way that it was formatted. I love the characters. I love the way Lucy Foley has these kind of archetypal characters. I think I gotta move Murder on the Orient Express forward. I think it is just... Pfft, it's probably my favourite, Christy. It's my favorite Christie. Then we've got the last episode of versus the press apartment. It's easy. I'm sorry. <laughs> yup, 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 yup. Yup. The Paris apartment should probably not have made it this far. It just got lucky <laughs> in its in its battle. It just it made it out lucky, you know? It shouldn't have made it this far. It, again, if it had been a good girl's guide to murder, a good girl's murder would be up here. And that would be a better, you know battle it out. There's this four, these two pairings here, absolutely diabolical. Then we've got Lady Hardcastle Mysteries versus Murder on Norrin Express. Is it crazy? I think I gotta go with the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. <laughs> I think because it's a series and I, now this series to me is like almost always gonna be a five star. I love this series. It's such a comfort series to me. Um, that I think I gotta move that forward. Even though Agatha Christie arguably, you know, probably higher quality. And then the final battle. <laughs> it's the last devil to die versus the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. We all know, we all know that the last devil to die is gonna win. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is recency bias because I read this fairly recently and so it's in my brain, but what a book. And like the fact that we're not getting a new Thursday Murder Club this year, I know he's publishing a new, um, Rich Osman's publishing a new series. I'll put the cover here, it's called We Solve Murders. I'm very excited, I love the cover. All, all murder mystery covers are gonna look like this now because they all look like the Thursday Murder Club series. I just think, A, the mystery in this is wonderful, but without spoiling anything, the human, <laughs> I'm gonna cry, the human, the human story in this book is, amazing it's amazing and i love what richard osman is doing in the genre and i hope that we keep and keep i hope the success of him you know being the most successful here in the uk these are the most successful series they are some of the most successful books they're the most bought they're the most length in the library you know he's really like it's really massive here in the uk and i i just hope that we keep getting more mainstream murder mysteries because of this and not just rip-offs not just cozy murder mysteries with elderly characters like i want i want all types of murder mysteries because of the success of these I, does that make sense i just i i i hope publishing wakes up to the fact that we don't just want old people serving murder mysteries we want all types of murder mysteries but i i mean i love old people serving murder mysteries but there's just so many that are like identical to thursday murder club and like think of all like let's get more of the guest list let's get more one by ones let's get more wrong place wrong times like let's get all different types of murder i just need more this is my this is my push for just every book to be published to be a murder mystery. No, we're not surprised that it won. I am surprised that certain books made it. Like, probably the Thursday Murder Club should have won over the guest list. Probably the press department should not have made it this far. Like, that, that's the thing about doing a tournament like this. Like, it's this is not my ranking of this. It's just when you put these books to battle it out against each other on a certain day, I might choose a certain book, you know? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me 
battling my murder mysteries against each other and putting them in a tournament format, not ranking them, but putting them in a tournament format to find my favorite. And I mean, my current favorite is The Last Devil to Die, we're not surprised. But yeah, if you, if you doubt my, my, my uh, decisions, <laughs> that's okay, I do too. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.